Um, welcome to Poetry Lockdown, day 44. Um, really excited to uh, to be presenting on a poet, Philip Metris, um, whose book Sand Opera uh, has been really important to me, and it's a, it's a powerful book, and I think is pertinent in this in this moment as well. Um, so I have told you um, part of why I'm really enjoying Poetry Lockdown um, is it 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 actually is is giving me an, ex, an excuse to look at forms of poetry um, or uh, topics in poetry that that I don't always look at myself that aren't necessarily my go to's. Um, and one of the forms um, that that, uh, to be honest, I don't practice much myself um, is this idea of found poetry or erasures. And what poets mean by that is like you can actually just by looking at the language in, in a document that you find in your everyday life, you can find a poem, right? Especially if you you kind of arrange the, the words that you're seeing a certain way. Um, or through erasure, sometimes you can take a document and you can, you know, marker out words and you can you can find a poem that way too. Um, and I find that I do not write much of this uh, myself, um, but I have found just in, in my reading life, some of this can be incredibly powerful. Um, and especially I've been thinking about this just because of how much news it, it, it's required to consume to really make sense of, of what's happening in the world right now. Um, having the discernment uh, to see uh, language clearly is, is a real gift. And, and Philip Metris is definitely someone who has that gift. So uh, that's, a, that's an intro um, to a poem from this book. It's called Sand Opera really really powerful book um and you can see right there's some erasure right in the the title itself right if you look at that uh sand opera we've got erased out the a r d and t i n g and procedure standard operating procedure this book um meditates on interrogates considers uh the abuses at the abu Ghraib uh, prison and so um I want to read for you before I look at the poem, um, some of uh, Philip Metris's notes on the book. So he says, sand opera began out of the vertigo of feeling unheard as an Arab American in the decade after the terrorist attacks of 2001. After 9-11, Americans turned an ear to the voices of Arabs and Muslims, though often it has been a fearful or selective listening. Even Errol Morris chose to interview only Americans for his Abu Ghraib film, Standard Operating Procedure. After 9-11, I found myself split between my American upbringing and my Arab roots, between raising young children and witnessing the, the war on terror abroad. I continue to ask myself what it means to be a human being and what it means to rear vulnerable creatures in a world where humans seem hellbent on violence, using defense and security as alibis for domination and revenge. I take solace in Herodotus' notion, the historian, of writing, quote, to prevent these deeds from drifting into oblivion and find peace in the durability of art, that momentary stay against confusion. So I feel like that gives you a good context uh, for the poem that I'm going to read for you. And I would just say, just because Facebook um, doesn't allow me to cut and paste the text of the poem because it's got some really cool uh, visual things happening with it. So if you see that link uh, and it's possible for you to you know, watch the video later or look at the poem later, I totally recommend it. And I can show you what, what I'm seeing. Right. So there's two two poems in one, really, in this home sweet home. Right. On one, you have this this uh, block text in bold and the other underlaid is this other text. And in the notes, uh, Metris says, right, there are really two parts to this, right? One of them is a letter uh, from a friend of the poet, a Marine, uh, speaking about his experiences of war. The other is a widow of a soldier who has died, whose tank, um, dr I think, drowned him in the, in the, the Tigris River. Okay. So, I think I'm going to start with the, the back page first and read the, the front page last. So this is from uh, the letter from the Marine. Home sweet home. 
by Philip Metris. When the Abu Ghraib photos first came out, I was in Afghanistan capturing insurgents and bringing them to the interrogation facility in Bagram. We gathered intel tying M, a former Taliban and judge in the Ghazni province, to many murderers, to many murders, including the torture, rape, and burning alive of little children in front of their parents. So we searched his office and found ledgers, lists of deceased people and houses he stole. He was tied to deaths of our own soldiers. Help remembering, remember the terrible stench of this man. I remember talking with people who wanted only to know where their relatives' bones were buried. But M was eventually released. He was a murderer, but we didn't detain murderers, only terrorists and insurgents. I remember lying on my cot at night and looking up at the ceiling and thinking I had looked directly in the eyes of evil and could do nothing about it. I could do nothing about it. And now from the widow, she, she speaks. I climbed inside, they closed the hatch, sat there thinking, this is such a little hole and my love was so much bigger than me. And this hole was where he died and where they drove through a berm into the Tigris. They told me about scratch marks. I tried not to look, but I couldn't stop thinking about him trying to scratch his way out, the tank filling with water. You take that last breath, can only hold it so long before you have to breathe again. Um, this is a new experience for me reading this kind of a poem, um, you know, audio visually. Uh, and I think <laughs> what I'm sensing is it's probably more powerful if you, if you have it in your hands. But um, one of the things that that really moves me is is the overlay between this kind of like the the, the mingling of of tragedies. Um, and I'm I'm really moved. And one of the reasons I read it second by um, by the widows uh language um i i think there's just something about experiencing again um you know the last moments of her husband the, the terror of that um and and to me that definitely rhymes with the terror of so many of those prisoners in abu Ghraib. so with that thought <laughs> there's a lot more uh, i think that could be said about this this poem um I will read the, the, the last lines and, uh, and close out day 44. Thank you for, for tuning in and thank you, Philip Metris, for this thoughtful uh, and powerful poem. I tried not to look, but I couldn't stop thinking about him trying to scratch his way out, the tank filling with water. You take that last breath, can only hold it so long before you have to breathe again. Thank you, Philip Metris, and thank you all for tuning in.